totes, my goats. Social media has become part of the lives of many who use the internet, and they are presented with a countless array of tools and platforms that allow us to share information, whether that's text, photos, audio, or video. Many of us log on to our favorite social media sites many times a day, if not multiple times an hour. And because social media is evolving, then perhaps so must we, if we want to always be where the puck is going, so to speak. Algorithms, patterns, and directions change as quickly as new social media tools pop up. Is it possible to keep up? Is it necessary? Well, that depends on how and why you use the plethora of avails online. It's changing every day. I mean, even myself, who's been in this for nine years, I'm still learning every day. We're all learning every day. You have to just watch and learn and see what everybody else is doing. And sometimes that's not even acceptable. What everybody else is doing is wrong. What is common practice? What is best practices? Is it okay that I just grab a picture off of Pinterest if I link up the source and put it on my blog? And some people are gonna still say, yes, that's okay. Myself, I say, no, that's absolutely not okay. You're gonna get different answers no matter who you speak to. So it's, it's a tough world, I will admit. It's a very tough world. I think that we, we still have a long ways to go on interactivity of what social media can bring to you and the value that it brings to you. What is also changing is terminology. Facebook depression is a new phenomenon where being defriended or online bullying leads to real depression. And perhaps we should try to refine what it means to be a digital citizen before more lawyers get brought into certain types of online discussions because of a new term called twibble, a term that applies to libel in the Twitterverse. I think the people with money who uh, can be easy targets are starting to think twice about what they're saying because people will come after them because they have money to go after. I think other people who don't have the financial backing are still, eh, I can say whatever I want, I have nothing to lose. But I do think that you need to be thoughtful of what it is you're posting because if you're just one of these people that are always complaining or one of these people that are even always positive and uplifting and everything's all good, people just shut that stuff off, right? They don't want to hear uh, all the chatter. They want to hear things that are meaningful. Social media is finding better ways of filtering some of that stuff because there is so much noise and so much information that people are getting a little more selective of what they absorb. It's all about value from both, again, business and individuals. What kind of value are you creating? What, how are you giving back? It's not about you. And I think it needs to start um, giving and looking outwards more. How can we help that person? How can we give to this person? Instead of just, look at me, everybody, how great I am. And as much as many wish social media would simply go away, the two professionals in our story don't believe it is. And perhaps that becomes a bit more obvious when we see that even some of the youngest in our society already know what social media is and have never lived in a world without it. From Kelowna for Go Okanagan, I'm Tammy Williams.